Hello everyone. So um, I'm coming out with another video because I realized that I forgot to mention the pros and cons of playing Embalmer or the reasons why should you play Embalmer in rank or just in your normal matches. So let's get into it. Embalmer, the first and main reason to play Embalmer is because, well, he's a freaking handsome guy, you know? If you compare to guys in the game, I'm pretty sure Embalmer, hands down, is the cutest or the most handsome looking one, alright? Cowboy? Nah. Seer? Nah. Seer, you're blind. Stop. Okay, so, he also looks a bit like um, Kaneki Ken from Tokyo Ghoul, and everyone loves freaking Kaneki. That's just, that's his biggest reason. So, what's, what's reason number two? Reason number two for playing Embalmer is... Um, he's self-reliant, he and the mechanic are the probably the only two character survivors in the game that can save themselves. They don't need to rely on their teammates to come and save them. The bomber, you just go somewhere, pop a coffin, run around the map, get caught, and guess what? You're off the chair in 10 seconds. No one has to come and save you. Um, you don't have to slowly die on the chair as you watch your other three teammates continue ciphering and decoding and whatnot. So that's reason number two. He can rescue himself. Um, number three, he's a fairly good kiter in, the, in terms of causing the hunter to chase you around. Typically, I want to say that hunters might treat embalmers and coordinators the same way. Hunters don't really want to waste their time chasing a coordinator or chasing an embalmer around. Uh, embalmer has no vaulting debuff. He does not get slow when he vaults anything or when he slams down pallets. Um, and he has just a minor, a minor decoding debuff, which is that if you cipher with teammates, you have a slower 10% decoding speed. But that's not a problem. Just just go by a teammate um, and then mark them down and then leave them and then move on to the next cipher. Just cipher by yourself. That's always something that's good. Uh, but no vaulting debuff, right? So uh, when a hunter chases you around, and you play with them and you kite them around and then they eventually get you, they put you on the chair, you spawn back up in your coffin if you place it early in the game. And then usually the hunter will start chasing towards that coffin because they just want to bring you down immediately. And then like someone else mentioned, um, because the hunter is wasting so much time on you, chasing you down the first time, putting you on the chair, and now chasing you to your coffin, and then chasing you around some more after you get out of the coffin. You're wasting their time and that's really good. You can probably waste a hunter's time for even 3-4 ciphers if your teammates continue decoding. And then there are times, more often than not, where you end up sacrificing yourself so that your teammates can all get away. So that's also a huge benefit. Uh, he works really well on certain maps that are large and has multiple levels. So. Lakeside Village is a really large map. If you put your coffin on one side of the map and run to the other, uh, the chances of the hunter reaching there before you before you spawn again uh, is very low. So, and then if you put the coffin on the boat where there are stairs and everything, and you can jump down and loop around, that's even better. Same thing for hospital. You put the coffin on the second floor of the hospital, either inside where the ciphers is or outside where you can jump out of the hospital. You can loop them around multiple times. If they choose to chase you after they put you on a chair and you respawn in the coffin, they choose to go up the stairs, they're wasting a lot of valuable time. Uh, on certain maps like Arms Factory, uh, where it's kind of really small, you might have to consider getting the borrowed window persona going to the left side and making sure that you're kiting and wasting the hunter's time as much as possible. Uh, sometimes on that map on Arms Factory, I will go for borrow window, I mean broken window and borrow time, sorry. On Red Church, Red Church he's fairly good with any build, either going um, 
Ty Turner and Borrow Time, or even going for Broken Window and Ty Turner, Broken Window, Borrow Time, anything that you really like. Uh, and just, you just need to know where to put the coffin, where whether it's by the exit gates, um, somewhere where all the grave, like where all the grave tombs are, where there's long rows for where you spawn, you can kite around, um, putting the coffin by a uh, pallet is also a good idea, or like right in front of the pallet, you can even slam down the pallet first and then put the coffin, just to make sure that it takes longer for the hunter to reach you. So yeah, just always think about where you want to put the coffin, make sure that it's a safe spot, and then if you're going to get caught by a hunter, um, make sure to bring him as far away from your coffin as possible. Um, and then usually some hunters, they just don't pick you up. They're going to chase you around, hit you down, and then leave you on the floor. And that's perfectly fine as well. You're wasting the hunter's time. You're not taking any sort of uh, rocket chair time off. And then eventually your teammates hopefully can not finish ciphering and then open the exit gate and your borrowed time kicks in and you start running for the door or you run to the dungeon, something like that. So yeah, those are the main benefits of why you should play the Embalmer. Number one, he's handsome. Number two, he's self-reliant. Number three, he's a great way to waste a hunter's time. And number four, he's great on maps that are really large or has multiple levels. And the only con that he comes with is that he can't cipher with teammates and that hunters sometimes don't put you on a chair, which isn't really a con in itself. But yeah, that's about it. Please continue checking out my other videos on Embalmer, and thank you, see you again.